Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And um, for today's podcast, our roundtable, we got a great group. We got Mike Zeno, the Zen Master. Mike, how are you, Mike? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, what's been going on with you, Mike? All kinds of good stuff. You know, we got Laura working from home now. She left her job, and now she's, uh, I call her a guru girl. <laughs> cool. Very cool. No, it's going great. It's, uh, she's a little bit more organized than I am, so she's whipping me into shape. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, we've got Eric Peterson, landopia.com. Eric, how are you? Doing well, thanks. All right. Good week? Yeah, not too bad. I've got... Um... I don't know, about five or so properties I should be purchasing this week and hopefully uh, working on two sales right now that um, should be wrapping up this week if all goes well. Awesome. Awesome. Scott Todd. Hey, Mark. How's it going? It's going well, man. It's going well. Um, PaymentGeek.io. It's looking good. It's looking real good. Um, so let's just talk to Eric about when you're buying five properties, right? For this roundtable mm -hmm. discussion, let's talk about how we buy bulk deals. I don't know if it's this five even considered a bulk deal. Mike, what's a bulk deal to you? Uh, closing on seventy right now, so like that's a bulk. That's a bulk deal. <laughs> All right, for sure, for sure. Mike just dropped the mic. <laughs> Not intentionally. It's just he asked the question. <laughs> All right, so. So, Mike, when you're buying 70 properties, yes. how, it, do you approach it differently than you do if you're buying five or even one? Well, it's the same. The beautiful thing is it's the same system. So it's really not tremendous amount of any more work on our end, you know. Um, it's just, you know, when you make sure all your ducks are in order, you know, there's a lot of parcel numbers and things like that. But our assistants are taking care of that. So I don't think it's tremendously different. It's just that, you know, uh, just going to keep it in the system. You know, we, we use the LG pass, we have everything kind of organized and it's really, you know, it's all uh, farmed out to, uh, we're delegating a lot of the tasks, of course, with our assistants and, uh, and we have it in the system. So I, I can't say it's tremendously different. No, I, I mean, no, no. Eric Peterson thoughts. No, I, I, I think I would agree. I, I mean, um, the five I mentioned actually are all are not from the same seller. Three of them are, but two are other sellers. But in the past, um, I've never done anything as big as 70. But, uh, you know, anytime you have multiple properties with one um, seller, I feel like it's easier, um, actually. Uh, uh, it's a little less work. Um, I mean, Sure, you still need to do all the same due diligence, but at the same time, um, just working with a single person versus multiple, I think there's some time savings there. When you close, you know, you can only, you can just use one deed, list all those properties out. Um, so there's some efficiencies in there as well. Yeah, and you go through a tile company, right? I and mean, that's just a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, they do all the, the tile work for you. Uh, Mike, what title company do you recommend right now? Um, well, the Southwest title is good. I mean, there's a few of them out there that are, that are good, but uh, we're um, we're actually not. This is a really uh, we're getting a great deal. So it's these are some tiny little lots. We're buying them probably like not much over a hundred dollars a piece. So I mean, it's it's going to be a so this is a yeah this is a good deal. It's it's fairly uh, fairly simple. But I guess one of the bigger things was that, you know, this is someone who's owned the land for a long period of time. So the parcel numbers, you know, that, that's sometimes parcel numbers change, right? The legal description conveys the ownership, but uh, of the title. But so, you know, that our VA, you know, just, just basically hammering that out because, you know, sometimes the counties change those over time. But yeah, it's, you know, this is a pretty decent purchase, you know, for some stuff that, uh, you know, it's not a huge amount of money. It's, uh, you know, hundred to hundred fifty dollars a property and uh those can you know definitely be sold at like three four hundred percent a piece so it'll be good it's great I'm, I'm definitely happy about it it's a great deal <laughs> yeah scott's hot how come we didn't find that deal first 
You know, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike's got this little, little area that it, he, he tends to work in. He's got this, um, <laughs> the thing about Mike that I noticed and Mark, I don't know if like, I know that you're this way, I'm this way and Mike's this way. The, the reality is, is that you don't necessarily need this massive, you know, international or, you know, entire domestic mailing campaign to buy land. What, what I do is I've got some little areas that I tend to buy in all the time and I keep going back to there. It's almost like, you know, you find gold there and what do you do? You just keep going till the gold ends, right? You don't, you don't just bolt and quit because I got to tell you something, these areas that I work in, I get tired of them. I'm bored with them. But you know what? My customers aren't. And so it's just like, let's just keep going back and, and pulling more gold out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for years and years, I, I really was just working on, you know, 40 acre parcels in Nevada. Thank you, honey. My, my wife just brought me a, a bulletproof Americano. Oh, nice. wow. that's the benefits of being the land geek. <laughs> so, oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, Mike. <laughs> yeah, see, Mike. Did. Eric, where's your wife bringing you your drink? I mean, there, there, there she is. We all got it right there. there. We all got it. Yeah. <laughs> Same delivery. <laughs> now, if we could just way... time that next time, like one, two, three. This is way better than Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I lost my train of thought. We're talking about working in just one area rather than having yeah, yeah. i mean i you know for so for years i mean i'm working like three areas three counties in nevada and full-time nothing else totally focused on those and you know it, it, it was a seven-figure business nothing wrong with it right um which so for eric peterson like how many counties are you working um Two, mainly working on adding a third. I'd like to, yeah. to have about three counties that I'm working. I mean, Scott Todd, if you talk to a wholesaler and said, I'm only working, you know, three counties, would they be like, what? Like, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, though. Maybe he's, you know, I don't know. What is, what, you know, when you first started Land Geek, right, did you think, what was your expectation as far as, like, mailing and marketing and how many counties – you'd need to work. I, I don't know if I ever thought about it, but you know, like here's what happened, Mark, is I, I saw other websites like, you know, Billy Land, for example, and Land Century and Land Central. I saw all these, you know, land websites, land sellers, and they literally have land all over the country. Right. And there's something in my, like something in my brain said like, okay, I want to be as big as them. So let me mail here. Let me mail here. Let me mail here. Well, what happened was, uh, I, there was inventory that I sat on for a while, right? Because they weren't those faster moving um, counties. And like the, the areas I work in, it's not even necessarily that they're faster moving. It's that I connect with the buyers there. And I think that's a big thing is, is if you can connect with the buyers in a particular market, well then why, why leave it, right? Like there's, there are clearly markets that I do not connect with the buyers in. And I'll tell you what, I bought four pieces of property today in an area that I do not connect with the buyers in. I don't understand them, right? Like I don't understand why anybody would buy land here, but you know what I, you know why I bought them? I bought them because I'm gonna wholesale them. And I'll, I'll buy them. Right, so yeah. there you go. You know, and when it, you know, when it comes to those deals, like I really wanna buy it only so Eric Peterson can't have it. <laughs> like, <laughs> is that wrong? Mike, yeah. you know, how many, how many counties are you working? Oh, three. And I, and I think in the beginning, I what Scott was talking about, I was going to these different sites and all over the place, trying to like dig into all these different counties, just wearing myself tired. And um, then you settle in and you relax and you take a deep breath and you realize, wait a minute, you know, this, I, I can really just do my work here. Now, it's, some, it's interesting because if you go to other people's websites, what can happen is, you know, we know because we buy a lot of land, right, that you may be working with one person in the county you normally work in and they say, well, I got these other ones over here. And you're like, oh, all right. And you get a good deal and you take them. But that doesn't mean that's your prime county. Now, if somebody else looks at my website and goes, oh, geez, Mike likes working in X, XYZ County. Look at his properties here. Well, that's not really the case. I had a guy that I was buying a bunch of land from and he had three or four parcels that he wanted to off. I got a good deal. So, I mean, I guess there's a little 
you know, you got to be careful when you do that, right? So you got to know your market and, um, but yeah, three counties, you know, two primarily, three, you know, um, and if I get any other areas that I'm not familiar with, like Scott said, I'll just wholesale them. Um, you know, I'm not going to turn down money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting what Scott said about being bored with a county. Yeah. Um, do you guys ever feel that way? Yeah, I could get, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, this. Is, I, I look at the land business like uh, sifting for uh, gold. You know, I get flakes sometimes, and sometimes I get those big nuggets. Of course, I like to try a new river once in a while, right? I'm in the same river every day, like fishing, right? I'll, I'll go try the, that one over there, you know? So I get it, you know? But if this one over here, I keep getting fish that's feeding my family, right? I was like, you know, I don't really need to go, but I, I get it. Yeah, it, it's the same terrain. It's the same thing. There's nothing really remarkable other than it brings a lot of money in. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mark, you know, right. the, pro the problem is, is that we, we, um, it's a really a mental thing, right? Like if you can just tune out all of the noise and find an area that you're making sales in, it becomes a scale issue, right? Like it's, if you can, if you can, if you can make a few sales and you start to build up that following and then you scale in that one area, well, then by its nature, you will start to make sales faster because you become the go-to guy for that area. Every ad posted for that area is your ad because you're using postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek to, to <laughs> automate your land postings. You're dominating that area. And then like every time they're, they're coming to you, every time they're clicking on one of those ads in the area, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. They have no choice but to buy it from you. Right. Yeah. So Scott, what about scarcity mentality right if i'm doing posting domination yeah if you're doing posting domination so with a click of a button i can put up 124 ads on craigslist with a click of a button you can do the same thing if we're both in that same area yeah in, say florida right does it affect the market i don't think it does and here's why because your ads are going to pull people that that you that draw to you and you're thinking like okay. you're unique right? And I'm unique and I'll tell stories a different way than you do. I will write ads a, di a way, different way. And there's no way that I'm going to appeal to everybody. Look, there's, there's a fact that not everybody's going to like you in the world. Not everybody's going to connect with your message and that's okay. Find your people, have your own voice and your people will come to you. Yeah. I mean, Eric Peterson, you, when you first started, you have that sort of that, that feeling of, wait, if, if Mark is here and Scott's there and the Zen master, Mike Zano's here, I better go there. I don't want to go where they are. Did you feel yeah. that way or, or you're like, no, I want to follow Zeno. He's doing it. No, I, th I, I think that, that I did start off that way, you know, feeling that uh, if everybody's, you know, out West, for example, well, you know, maybe I should start near home so I can, you know, do something different. And by the way, if, you know, I'm worried about something, I could go look at the property. And I did that. And, um, you know, I, I think it slowed me down at the beginning. It, uh, it took me time to sell those properties. Um, and then I, I went ahead and I, I moved out West and, you know, everybody's there, but I still buy property. I still sell property. Um, I think, Part of the key is just being out there marketing your properties on a regular basis. And, you know, there's, there's enough buyers out there. There's more than enough land out there. Um, I, I think it just, you know, it works. Yeah. I mean, so, when you have a multi-billion dollar market and billions of acres and a handful of people doing it, it it's only those handful of people doing it think that, you know, the market is there's com competition there's no competition I, lo I love when scott todd is like well when i go to my mailbox every day i get another credit card offer credit card companies are still in business right so they must be making money scott what am i missing here it's mindset man it's like what i what we just said it's, it's all about your mindset you've got to change if you're struggling here you've got to change that mindset because you're really holding yourself back Right, right. So, Mike, when you're talking to people and they're like, you know, what, what can I expect in this business? Like, what, what do you think the, the real fear is that people have that is stopping them from taking action and, you know, creating a passive income in raw land? 
And maybe they're like, you know what? Maybe Rob Land's not for me. Screw it. ATM investing, right? right. Like, right. What do you think it is? I think it's one thing I really think it is. They look at other people and they say, well, success is for them. It's not for me. And they look at people and they say, well, I'm not sure I can do that. You know, I'm not sure if that's something that I can accomplish. And what we find out over and over and over again is that all they have to do is follow the actionable steps. They get into a flight school. They go and they follow a coaching program. They follow the steps that are in place. And then there's no questioning. So the results come. And those results actually generate the confidence to bring more results. But in the beginning, if they're left to themselves, like we always say, right, it's not a knowledge gap. It's an execution gap. If they're left to themselves, they're going to question themselves. And the fear that they're going to make a mistake or they're not going to take the correct action or that maybe that's just not meant for them. Maybe they're not meant to be successful. I, mean, I, I said it because that's how I felt. They had these glass ceilings, right? And I think this is, this is as high as I can go. This is it. And then someone comes along, you know, and, and you see someone, uh, boom, blow up. Scott Todd blows up. And you're like, oh, my God. That, that, and he makes it like someone ran the five-minute mile, the four-minute mile. It's like, I can do that. You know, you see it. It becomes something that you can accomplish. And, but you got to take action. And I think that's what drives people hey, uh, away is lack of action. <laughs> hey, Mark, I, I had the greatest compliment today, I think. Uh, someone that I know sent me a text and they're, they're doing land investing. And they said to me, Hey, you, it took you 17 months and three days and I'm going to beat it. And I'm like, great. Right. Nice. Like right. that, that's, that's a nice, um, it's, it's funny because. But did they beat it? Well, they haven't beat it yet. They're on their way. Right. Like okay. that, that's, they're, they're still within the time frame that they, that they think they can beat it. And look, there's no problem. You know, the, the thing is, is that, the, the thing about this whole deal is that that's just a way of measure. It's a measurement, right? right. And you've got to identify what way is going to, you know, how do you judge success, right? What measurement do you use to judge success? If you're using 17 months and three days to, to judge success and beating me, great, let's, let's do it. And if, that, if that's what, what you need, you know, maybe, maybe you're judging success based on doing just a couple of deals a year. Fantastic. Right. Like be right. happy with the, re, with the results that you're doing and just do more of them to, to where you're happy. I love it. Eric Peterson, you're on desert Island. Okay. You can take one book, one book <laughs> yeah. that's going to change your mindset. You're going to read it again and again, and again, you're going to integrate it. You're going to come off that Island and you're going to start, you know, just blowing up. What book would you bring? Um, I think I know my answer, by the way, but I'd be curious. Yeah, that's a tough question. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, can you I think, think of a uh, mindset book that you've read? And you were like, oh my gosh, it was, it was motivating. You know, it kind of broke you through some barriers or some fears you might've had. And you're like, I'm going to, you know, do this. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I guess where I started, um, in the whole kind of arena of real estate, it was probably with Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. Um, so, you know, I might take that. I mean, I, I don't think that um, for me, that book or, or any one book for that matter was kind of a, a, you know, deciding factor, if you will. I think for myself, it was more, you know, um, buying the toolkit, going through the program, doing, you know, following the steps and then, finding success along the way and, you know, eventually making that first sale. I mean, to me, that's what changed my mindset is, all right, you know, I can do this. Like, I just need to keep it going, you know, be diligent yeah. about it, keep working at it. And so, so maybe I'll take rich dad, poor dad and, and the toolkit. All right. I love it. I love it. Mike Zeno, what about you? Well, uh, in my circle, he's well known, but in most people, he's very probably uh, not so well known. But uh, Stephen K. Hayes, How to Own the World. Wait, he's, wait, I got, I got to get this book. Stephen K. Hayes. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, if I'm not even sure if you can find it right now, but you can try How to Own the World. How to Own the World. Okay. To come up. Uh, Google How to Own the World Amazon books. Here it is. A code for taking the path of the spiritual explorer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to me, it's, it, it identifies so many different areas in your life. It shows you how you can empower yourself on so many levels. Um, just because I think we all have latent abilities. We all have 
superhuman abilities, right? They're not like, you know, Batman or anything like that. But we have abilities to go beyond the norm and what we think our limits are. And I think, well, this book, for sure, definitely identifies a different, you know, areas in our life that we have control over should we choose to take control. That's I love it. Yeah. I love it. Scott Todd? Oh, man, you asked me this the other day and I... <laughs> No, just like a mindset book. I ask you every day for a tip of the week. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, no one, no one has it harder than Scott Todd. <laughs> I have to come up with a lot of tips. I know. Week. I mean, one of these days he's just going to wake up and like, be like, Mark, no, I got no tips. You, I'm no, done. I got nothing. You, you come up with a tip of the week. Yeah, you come up with two. Yeah. So, Mark, I, I said this uh, on a different podcast and I'll use it again the 22 immutable laws of marketing. I love I'll that Reese. Book. Uh, you know, if you, it's old, it's dated, but you know what? It's very relevant. You know, like if you want to figure out how to, how to be different, how to, uh, set yourself apart, it's a good book. Yeah. I, I, it's a great book. Um, so can you get it on audio or do you think you should own it? Um, I, I, I don't know. I own it, but maybe audible is good too i don't know i i have audible credits so maybe i'll get one okay maybe i'll get on audible too yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna add a wish list here um because what i like to do now is i have the book but i put on my my headset um and then i listen on 3x speed and read at the same time totally focused on the book it's great 3x wow. speed 3x speed because wow. i'm i'm because my i'm reading fast right so it's got to be listening and reading i'm listening and reading at the same time so i don't have like the, that whole mike zano add thing going on wow i like that see that's a great that's my tip of the week get both books the audio and the physical and read it and listen to it at the same time because you know how many times i mean i struggle with this where my i get lost in thought next thing you know i read three pages or i thought i read three pages but i was really thinking about you know, what am I going to have for dinner that night? Yeah, or, you very know, true. You know, is, is my middle child mad at me again or something? <laughs> you know, whatever it is. And then it's like, wait, I just, th I thought I read these three pages. I really didn't. So that helps me. All right. Well, now we're at that point in time. Everybody has to come up with the tip of the week. <laughs> Peterson, what's your tip of the week? Oh, man. Um, oh, wait, I did, give, I did give my book, though. Yeah, you got to give your book. The book that really that really helped me have the courage to quit my investment banking job and, and invest in raw land full time was Rich Dad Poor Dad, the very first one. I find it extremely motivational, and I, I, it's just I don't know what it is. It's a magical book. Okay, cool. sorry, Eric. Go ahead. Tip of the week. All right. So I don't know if you've given this one before. Um, Mix Max. It's yes, a, I love that. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. It's a great tip. So it's an add-on or, or whatever for Gmail. Um, but the, the reason I like it so much and I have, I would much rather prefer to have an email client like, you know, Scott's tip uh, the other week about uh, what was it called? Shift, Shift. or something. Yeah. Um, and I've looked at Polymail and, and some others. But what Mixmax has that uh, no desktop client seems to have is this um, – Templates uh, for emails. I mean, that's <clears throat> that's awesome, and it Mixmax has that. But what's what's great that I use all the time is um, this ability to create sequences. It's almost like a you know an e automated email sequence that goes out, um, so I can trigger those on a regular basis as I see fit um, to you know potential new leads and things like that, and. Um, it just, it saves me a lot of time being able to do that. So I, I really like that uh, little piece of software. I love Mixmax. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Mike Zeno, tip of the week. <laughs> so you're looking for a website? Or just no, no, like... it doesn't matter. It can be anything. You might, you might be like, you know, breathe. Like whatever it is, <laughs> tip of the week. Actually, yeah, I was just talking to David about that. And this is a great, that, I'm glad you said that. You just got, so you know, we got the M&Ms, right? Right. Yeah. You know, the mailing and the marketing. Um, so along those lines, you know, I, I love meditation. I love, as we talk about, I love all that type of stuff. So 
when this business gets overwhelming, when this business gets to the point where like maybe you just, you know, feel like you're getting a little bit too out there, you're going off onto these whirlwind things that aren't really of uh, consequence, bring it back. And, you know, in meditation, one of the best things to keep you in the moment is your breath. You know, you breathe in and you breathe out. It's one of the most present things we have. It brings you back to the now. So I always say, when I was talking to David Benalis earlier, and uh, it's uh, breathe in the mailing and breathe out the marketing. Just breathe in. I love that. And breathe out. And if you take that, it takes you back to what works in this business. What moves the, what moves the needle? There's only a few things, really. And that's mailing and marketing. So breathe it in and breathe it out. Great tip. Scott Todd, should I even ask you for a tip? <laughs> I got you, want to, you want to just give something like generic? No, I got a good one. Like, like stand? <laughs> Stand, breathe. I did get to a generic tip the other day, Matt. I was like, I was all out. And I'm like, hit shift tab from your browser and you'll change the tabs, which you actually let me pull that one off. So that was pretty good. Check yeah. out the, um, check out the, let me see, what's it called? It's, it's an app, Mark. It's in the iTunes app store. It's called I'm getting, I'm getting web. No, mobile web recorder. I just put it in the chat too. Well, Mo mobile web recorder. Is mobile this? web recorder. Okay. And basically what it does is it allows you to record screenshots, screen captures, if you will, like, like you know, screen recording. Is this from Flowboard? Uh, Flowboard, yeah. Okay. Record videos of mobile websites. So basically you can go on there and you can create training videos from okay. your mobile phone and it will record your key movements very much like, you know, screencast-o-matic or whatever, all from your phone. You know what? That's pretty cool. I'm not sure why I would do that over Zoom though. Maybe you want to be making training videos from the beach. All right. You got my two bucks. <laughs> Fine. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you what though. I'm not downloading it, and I'll tell you why. Because my <laughs> tip of the week is I'm back not checking email twice a week anymore. I got really stressed out with paymentgeek.io, and I became constantly checking, checking, checking email again because I was, like, waiting for things, and now I'm back on my addiction. So to help me break it, I downloaded an app called Onward. Onward. O -N check this out. O-N-W-A-R-D on the iPhone and what it does, you reduce screen time and block social media and it, it actually tracks it. So I check in, it's a bot and I check in once a day. It helps me breathe. It's like, how are you feeling right now? And like, if you're feeling stressed, it's like, okay, it, it goes through a breathing thing with you. <laughs> it's amazing. And then, and then it also, you know, it gives you like, you know, guidelines, like have an accountability buddy, you know? So I mean, it tracks everything. Um, it's really cool. So I can see like whew, better onward and it blocks, it'll say, okay, at four o'clock. Now you can check your stuff. So, and it blocks it now. Man, if you really? Yeah. What do you think, Scott? Uh, I, I might as well just go get this app that you sway with. I don't know. Sway's great <laughs> tip. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm working on it. Zen master Mike is not the only one that is working on his, being present and calm in this world. <laughs> All right. Well, I thought this was a great round table. Um, I do want to remind all of the listeners, uh, the only way that uh, we can continue doing this is if you do this three small favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review. So support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Now, some people will be like, hey, um, I did a, I did a, uh, a screenshot, a review. Where's my investor's toolkit? No, it's not the investor's toolkit. Okay. It's the passive income launch kit, passive income launch kit. Still tons of value in there, but it ain't worth two grand. Okay. It's 97 bucks. All right. Um, should we try to do it? One, two, three, <laughs> let Freedom ring. <laughs> all right. On behalf of Eric Peterson, Mike Zeno, and Scott Todd, I want to thank all the listeners. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the round table. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.